Okay, everybody. Hi. Um, am I audible to everybody? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I am going to talk about quantum behavior, not exactly quantum mechanics. Um, quantum mechanics is with those nasty equations. Everything apart from the nasty equations is here. So um, I'm, I'm what, what I'm planning to do is I'm going to explain quantum behavior through these experiments called double slit experiment. Um, some motivation behind this talk. Um, you don't get to see that every day, do we? We don't, right? And uh, that is my idea. Now, quantum mechanics to me is uh, is a branch of physics which is sort of still very unknown and also very complicated, even for the experts. So I I have tried my best to make this as simple as possible, and uh, I hope many of you enjoy what what exactly I'm talking about. So what, what, what is this exactly, right? Quantum behavior represents uh, the behavior of these extremely tiny particles at the subatomic level. Why do we need to care about them? Uh, you have your phones, and each and every time you tell your GPS to get your location and you want to go from point A to point B, point, uh, you need to know that quantum mechanics is behind that. And that's basically behind the atomic uh, clock, which is out there in the satellites. Another fancy thing, uh, fusion happening in the sun. Four protons combining together to form helium. Now, mind you, protons are basically, they have a positive charge and they're supposed to repel. They combine together. Does that, does that even make sense? Right. So, uh, let's focus on the first part, particles. What are particles? Uh, P particles are basically chunks, like you, like like a rock, right? They they occupy a certain particular space and they're discrete, right? They 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 are individual and in a finite set you can actually count them too. They also follow a deterministic path. Now, it's again based on intuition. You also have mass, you have velocity, so you can figure out where the where the particle would go through the Newton's laws, right? Um, then we move on to wave, right? Wave, on the other hand, is continuous. There's no start or end, depending on the source. Wait. Um, so uh, we have that set. It's a combination of highs and lows. What do you mean by highs and lows? These things go up and down and up and down. The up part is high and the down part is down. Uh, low, sorry. Yeah. And uh, there's another thing called wavelength, which is, as the word suggests, the length of the wave. Uh, two highs together is the wavelength. Because it's continuous, you don't know the start and end. Where, where, do, we, where do you go? Um, the next thing is that it makes an interference pattern. What, what exactly does that mean? We'll see about it right now. So when high and a low wave interact, they get nothing. You get zero. And the constructive interference is when two high waves interact and give an even bigger higher wave. Right? Um, now, if this wave pattern was were, were here, and there are two sources. You see these white things? Those are the places where there is destructive interference. There's absolutely no intensity at all. And the colored ones, of course, are the constructive ones. So now that we know about uh, particles and wave, um, quantum mechanics says that there's a dual nature. That can, things can exist as a particle and a wave. What does that really mean? It's very, uh, very unintuitive, right? So we do this experiment with particles, and in this case, let's say bullets, okay? And the setup is extremely simple. It's a double slit experiment, so there are two slits, slit one and two, and this is a gun. Um, this is not a great gun, it doesn't have much accuracy, so the bullets can go anywhere it wants, okay? And this is the detector, okay? And the detector will uh, detect the bullets coming to them. And what will happen is that it will make a sound called click, because it's a discrete thing, so it will automatically register that. Uh, what happens when only one of the hole is open? You get a distribution of bullets with this P1 right here. And you can see that the peak of this is corresponding to the position of the hole. Right? It makes sense. Right? Um, similar is the case with hole 2. And uh, once we have both holes open, you get P1 plus P2. Now, math says that if there's an event 1 where the electron goes from, wait, P1 
particle goes from a hole one, and uh, the uh, and uh, this is the distribution p one of that. Uh, the another event hole two, the distribution p two, is the res is the resulting thing. Uh, when both holes are open, you have p one plus p two, and that's exactly what has happened. Now, once we have uh, mentioned with particles, you come with wave. Right? What exactly does that mean? Um, we have a very similar setup, just that in this case, the detector is going to measure the intensity because it's not discrete, you know. So there's a, there's a very noisy buzz around if it can, if it can take. Um, so uh, you have a wave that passes through hole one in this case again, and um, the intensity pattern is pretty similar to what uh, the probability was for the particle behavior, right? Uh, now we do it with hole two. We get a similar pattern again. Now what happens when we have both holes open? We form an interference pattern, and that's exactly what we get. Now I need you guys to know all these things because this is probably the most boring. Uh, th th this was probably the bo boring part. But now we come to the crux of the situation because now we're going to do something really awesome. We're going to do the same experiment with electrons, okay? And um, there, so similar setup again. Instead of the gun, we have the electron gun. Now electrons have mass; they're tiny, but they still have mass, and this sort of seem like particles, don't they? Right. So we do a similar setup again. Again, uh, the detector is again clicking all its while when it, whenever it detects an electron. Um, we do a similar step, hole one, and this is also familiar. When we put both, there's an interference pattern. Does that does that make sense? What 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 exactly is this? Yes, that was. Not, not, that was just for the emphasis. Um, <laughs> so let's let's analyze this for a bit, right? Electrons are particles, and if they're particles, they're supposed to this p p one two was supposed to be p one plus p two. That's not the case. Why? Are they behaving like waves here? Are they? Are the particles dividing into two, and somehow doing some nasty things here to make it into a wave? Let's find out. Let's let's measure this. So we're going to do this experiment one more time. Similar setup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but in this case, we have a sensor, and a sensor is light based. Okay. So it's going to see which hole uh, the electron goes from, either hole one or hole two. And each and every time it detects an electron, it, there's going to be a flash. Okay. Um, so what we see next uh, with the individual holes are pretty intuitive. There's nothing much. But now when we have both holes open, we see the same electron distribution as this. Now it's suddenly behaving like a particle. And we're measuring this. So is this, is there something wrong? Is, is, is there something wrong with the measurement, or are we influencing the behavior of the electrons in certain ways? Mm, let's do another smart thing. Let's, let's dim this section. Now, when we dim it, we basically have uh, uh, electrons sometimes being detected and sometimes not. Okay? And once that happens, you have a very similar setup. The ones which are seen form this pattern and ones which are not from this pattern. This is something really crazy, right? Now it's, you see it, it's, it's, it's like a game of hide and seek, <laughs> or peekaboo, <laughs> right? And each and every time you see it, this is behaving something else, and each and every time you don't, the electrons are behaving some, like, like a wave. Um, what does this exactly mean? Right, that. Uh, <laughs> the consequence is electron is a particle, okay, and uh, what happens in the actual sense is that uh, we at least theorize through quantum mechanics that there is a particular wave function, and the wave goes like this, okay, and uh, uh, and if you want to see that particle, the particle could be anywhere inside this wave. So what this wave represents is the wave probability of you finding that electron. Okay, so 
let's see where the electrons are. It could be here, or here, or here, or here. And obviously, the most probable case would be somewhere in the center because that's where the highest probability is right. right? Now, let's take something uh, more significant than an electron, something more uh, of a, uh, something of a uh, higher dimension and maybe more awesome than electrons. Me. Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, uh, if I had a wave, oh, by the way, everybody has a wave. Uh, <laughs> we are all made of these things. And the thing with uh, these waves is that uh, the larger the mass, the, or the larger the object, the lesser is the wavelength. And as you see, the wavelength describes the probability. Right? And this is a shorter wave. So, the uncertainty is very less here. So that's why you can see me, but you cannot see an electron, unless, of course, if you want to see it as a particle. But anyway. <laughs> right? So, um, has physics given up? Everything, by far, we've, 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 we've done so far is deterministic. Whatever we have seen, we see objects, we feel objects, we know where they are in space. Now things are suddenly probabilistic. And the time you see it, it behaves something completely different. So, it has given up in a sense. <laughs> At least the deterministic part has given up. And we now come to the probability world, where nothing is really certain. And therefore, the law of quantum mechanics, right? And um, Richard Feynman famously said, like, I, I, I think I can safely say that nobody understands quantum mechanics, probably including me. There's, again, a sense of probability there, so, mind you. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it was uh, mathematically uh, theorized by this guy. Uh, this pretty cool guy, Erwin Schrodinger. He uh, probably was not a cat person, uh, but uh, he did some pretty cool stuff with physics. Yeah. Uh, now, how does it really work? Um, there's no machinery behind this. No one knows from which hole the electron went through, or did it pass through the wall, or what happened. There's no way to see it, because when you see it, it doesn't exist anymore, at least the wave part. So, what exactly is happening? What we know is the probability, and we can work around with the probabilities, right? And I meant to do that a little earlier than expected, but nonetheless. But it's not so bad, right? Because in the end, even if you have a double slit experiment, uh, you know, or rather at least math will tell you that 66% of the electrons will go in the center, right? And you probably don't care about how one single electron travels and so on and so forth. You're probably interested in how 100 electrons in a group travel from point A to point B. And you know that 66% would go there, right? Another cool thing. Now, we know that, um, like in, in the beginning, I, I gave an example of the sun. And the sun has uh, fusion, nuclear fusion taking, uh, take, uh, taking place. And it, it generates enormous amount of energy. And something extremely non-intuitive happens. Protons combine together to form helium atom. Some things that, that, that are not meant to be together are together because of quantum mechanics. Now. What happens here is, this is the place of the proton, okay? Now imagine the, these are the, are the walls, okay? And protons uh, are right here as described by the wave function. And the wave function is right here, right? And there's a very high probability that you'll find a proton here, right? Uh, but you also see these tiny blips on the left-hand side and the right-hand side across the wall. And this is the wall that is separating uh, two protons that acts as a repulsive force. And, uh, well, a uh, probability of you finding a proton here is, uh, is quite high. But then out here, it's 1 in 10 raised to the power 28 chances. That's close to zero. But it happens, right? You feel, you feel the sun's rays falling on you. And 
yeah, and this exists, and this is completely mind-boggling. And uh, to me, this is extremely amazing. And I, I'm not really sure if you're not if you're not amazed by this, I'm not really sure what what ama what, what what can really amaze you. Um, as of this moment, there's uh, one certain thing in this world of uncertainty. Uh, my, my time is probably up. Uh, thank you all for being here, and uh, uh, 50, 15 times for organizers. Thank you, f thank you all for all your help in all the departments. Right, and it's time for the questions. Thanks. Thank Did you I very much, Ija. So, any questions? Yes. Right. Um, sure. Oh, shit. <laughs> Why, uh, okay, I'm completely naive to this theme, so is it just electrons which behave like this, or is it also other subatomic particles which could do this? Because, you know, when they do all these experiments with large hadron collider, they see some particles. What are they looking at? What, what is colliding? So why can you see some of them and not see the other? C is, again, because of the sensors, but... Uh, We'll come to that later. Um, your first question was the electrons, right? No, there are other particles as well. In fact, there are th there's, there's a type of C60 molecule, fullerenes. And uh, it's as big as a sucrose molecule for the biology um, enthusiasts here. Um, uh, so yeah, this, this particular thing is again a very size effect because size represents your wavelength, the probabilistic wavelength. and Hence the uncertainty. And more the uncertainty, the more you sort of behave like a wave. You as in the particles. <laughs> right. And does that answer your question yet? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. okay, any other questions? Yes. So we can say basically that the wave is actually the particle we can see it as a particle because it has some um, characteristic movements of a particle, just uh, if we say that these wave packets are actually particles. I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must be a physicist, aren't you? <laughs> so, what I'm saying is that uh, why we can say that a wave is actually a particle. I, I never said that, did I say that? No, 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 you said that the wave can see as a particle. This no. is the dualism. It works both ways. Um, particle is a wave, and wave is a particle. Okay, I'm wave packets. Probably talking like way out of my league here because I'm discussing this with a physicist, I guess. So, just pause me if I'm incorrect. Okay, okay. this is what I understood. Uh, particles are still particles, but um, the way they uh, interact with oneself and the other ones uh, and and the other uh, particles is through wave probability and wave represents the probability part where it's not really physical as such it's just pure math which which basically just gives you a chance that hey in a given particular area you'd probably find an electron in the middle or somewhere in the end or whatever okay Wh so what you're describing is why um, a particle is a wave because actually we can only see the opportunity or probability to find the particle. Yes. What I'm asking is why a wave is a particle. Why it works both waves? You explain it just from uh, one side. Is wave a particle? Because that'll be something it new could for be me. Seen. It could be seen as a particle flow, yes. Uh, what do you mean by it could be seen? Well, waves. Because have when you see it, then the wave doesn't exist. No, it could be see with your eyes or something. Okay. No, um, it can be like I don't know, angenommen. <laughs> Damn it! I must improve my German skills. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, we can we can elaborate okay. more on okay, this. Okay, I will yeah. explain it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe like just just to <laughs> say something I don't know. Maybe some means. Maybe you should mention the answer time principle, and then you also should mention the the quantum. Mechanics is based on quantized. Uh, to be honest, to be honest, that was a part of the presentation, but I was sort of nervous, and then I just skipped it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, arise from the from this. Yes. The fact that we are not distinguished between what's 
your presentation about quantum behavior and then all the, the story about quantized stuff and everything like you cannot you can also <coughs> do the same with photon, no? You say, okay, the photon is a wavelength, but then I can see it as a particle if I say that the, uh, the energy can be quantized and then you can define a particle and then this also Yeah, yeah, that's true. But this is another yeah, this is another, yeah, 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 I, I understand, uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, um, anyway, Shazar, what I like the most about your presentation uh, is your positive attitude. <laughs> I spoke about probabilities, that's nothing positive. <laughs> <laughs> but you spoke very positively about okay. it. <laughs> yeah, you know the, the world of uncertainty, but... We, we go on, yeah, we, we never exactly. give up. Yeah. So actually my question is, uh, what are you going to do with all this stuff? I'm just gonna go home and sit relax and probably have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, so I, I am an avid physics follower. I am not studying physics, but I do things on my own. And uh, uh, to me, uh, sharing knowledge, as you said, is a really important thing. And if I am able to uh, generate even a quantum of interest in this, uh, it'll be it'll be fantastic. It'll be great. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sajar. Thanks. Thanks.